And this verse uh, is probably well known to all of you. The Lord our God is one. And uh, that's where the text comes from Mark chapter 12, 29. Because Jesus was asked in, in chapter 12, in verse 28, which commandment is the most important of all? And Jesus replied, this is the most important. And you may or may not know that he was quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. So since it's the most important one, can we say it out loud together? Ready? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. That's worth meditating on. And some of the ways I got arrested by the Holy Spirit, you know, has that ever happened when you're in your prayer time and, and it's like busted. <laughs> like I'd be, I was up here singing the song Breathe one time and it says, this is the air that I breathe. I'm desperate for you. And the Holy Spirit will say, well, you're not acting like you're desperate for me. And you have to say, like, I'm singing this song, but do I even believe what I'm singing? And if I don't, I should stop singing until I do believe it. Now, it could help you get there, of course, but these are all these little Holy Spirit checks that happen during the course of the week because he's got his compass pointed to true north, and we keep getting redirected by the world off the right compass, and the Holy Spirit keeps pulling us back and saying, no, there's a better way. I didn't say an easier way, but I said a better way because part of this challenge is all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. That doesn't happen by accident. You have to be very intentional for that to be the place where you live. And he said that's the most important. So I want to tie that in with the, in Exodus chapter 20 when Moses comes down off the mountain and he has the Ten Commandments in the stone. The very first one, I hope you can see, is connected to what we just read. Verse 2 says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Number one, no other gods before me. See how that ties into all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. So wherever we might be drifting, and he's only getting 80% of this part of my heart, right? It could be chunked up. This part's 100, but this part's only 70. This part's only 80. That could be a form of idolatry. And it doesn't mean that you have a shrine erected in your house. But look, let's just be real honest here. These things can become idols. Everybody has one. There is an off button on here. I don't know if you knew that. But you can turn it off when you're in a restaurant with your family having dinner. Don't be staring at your phone when you're with your family. Unless it's the menu. Because that was true for a while. I have to be careful when I make these edicts. Because you had to do that little screenshot to see what the menu was because they didn't want you to touch the menu because you might get a germ from the waiter. I hear you, man. That's a lot. Whatever. So, I, I th look, you know, like I can't get in your world. I can help you get into mine. And if you work on an exchange, you know, on the floor of an exchange like I did for a long time in New York City, there's an atmosphere that's antichrist in the atmosphere. It's money, it's greed, it's intelligence, it's bullying, it's not God, it's mammon, right? You know what that is? It's a spirit. You can't serve God and mammon, even though your job seems to be pushing you in that direction. But you have to take a stand and say, no, I'm going to influence this environment. This environment's not going to influence me. You have to be real intentional about that. I would get there early and I would uh, anoint my desk with oil, and I would take communion at my desk before anybody else got there, because that might have gotten me fired for being, you know, whatever, a prohibited transaction. I don't know, that's what they would call it. <laughs> so, like, look, you know, this is spiritual warfare going on, and the condition of your spirit dictates the quality of your decisions. You don't have to be too far off to make a bad decision. 
So this says, I'm the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And if you'd say, well, that was all the way back in the Old Testament. No. Any of you who were bound up in sin and you know what it was like to be in sin and not in control or be addicted and not be able to stop destructive behavior, that is slavery. With all due respect to any Egyptians that are here, sorry about that, right? But that's the analogy is they were slaves in Egypt for 400 plus years and we were slaves to sin before we knew the Lord. And unless we become born again, unless we have that second chance from the Lord, first you were born in the natural, in the water, the Bible says, but you also have to be born in the spirit or you don't even realize there's another kingdom. You can't even see the kingdom of God, never mind enter into his kingdom now, here, in this life. Yes, when we die, of course, but what about now? Wouldn't it be better to operate in God's kingdom principles while you're here in that secular setting? And look, most jobs are fine as far as like, you know, if you were, there's certain industries where you, you know, if you became saved, you'd probably have to leave. Adult entertainment, let's put that one on the table, all right? Well, pastor, I think I could be a light shining in the darkness. Well, no, I think you sh it's really dark, I get it but let's not spend our time promoting Satan, okay? But most jobs are not that way. That, you know, if you got saved, you'd have to leave. But you might have to be persecuted a bit. And that's where the strength comes. We get stronger when we get tested. I talked about that, I forget when, recently, about being anti-fragile. Your immune system has to be tested to be strengthened. They would try to grow trees in biospheres. And the tree would get to a certain height and fall over because there was no wind. The wind is what makes the roots grow deeper and stronger. It's the testing. This is for all of us. So it's not like, oh, I better go be a monk and hide up on a mountain somewhere. No, he gave you everything you need for life and godliness right here in this world. But you, you need courage. You need backbone to take a stand for the Lord and to know it's right. I remember when my children were uh, younger in school, and, and they had a, a, a friend of theirs that was Jewish, and he would wear a yarmulke to school, and they would make fun of him. And whenever he got put in a tough situation, he would say, well, I, I know you've asked me that question before, but you know how I feel, and I don't feel like I need to repeat myself. I'm not taking the yarmulke off, all right? And as a little kid, that's conviction. And when we were at the old location, there was a Jewish synagogue next to us, and they were building it while we were there. And the first thing they built was a school, not the sanctuary, because they understood the importance that the children need to get this burned in, the word of God. Why do you think they're so favored all over the world, wherever the Jews are? The, the IQ test that they take, it's because of God centering on the word. And that was Paul, the apostle, right? Now he gets filled with the Holy Spirit and he realizes Jesus is a God in the flesh. Now it's the full package. Amen.